Now, when you search, when you do a blast search, normally this would be your sequence ID and this is the bit score and the E value or expectation value. When you're searching the protein data bank, your accession ID generally consists of four alphanumeric characters. The first character is always numeric, one, two, three, four. Uh, the second character is always alpha, A, B, C, D. And then the next two characters are either alpha or numeric or some combination. So if you see an accession ID that has that pattern, numeric, alpha, and then mixed alpha numeric for two characters, you should immediately think that's a, a protein data bank ID. That's an experimental structure. Now you'll notice that all of these accession IDs that I'm showing you tend to have a fifth uh, alpha character associated with those. That is what's known as a chain name. So if within your structure it is uh, a complex of more than one polymer chain, let's say you have a homodimer or a heterotrimer or a heterohexamer or something like that, each of those different polymer chains has a different, a unique identifier called a chain name. So when you see a dash fifth character, that is the chain name, meaning uh, my similarity, I share sequence similarity with only one of the chains in the structure. Now, uh, just uh, you can see your E values here, and it is, uh, come on in, please, and uh, have a seat. Uh, your E value is giving you the expectation uh, that you will get a bit score that high for random reasons. And so you actually want your E value to be as small as possible. If you have a rough, uh, an E value less than 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, that's a rough rule of thumb that says that's a significant match. And that is my sequence and this sequence in the database share more sequence similarity than we would expect for random reasons. Uh, and so you can see that uh, the sequence that I've submitted here is similar to the sequence of the protein in 1TBG-D, the E value is e to the minus 104, so it's very significant, high sequence similarity. And so I'm confident that they shared a common ancestor, have very similar structures. You can look at the alignment and see if it's either identical or just similar. And so uh, searching using sequence similarity is a good way of seeing if your protein of interest, if a structure of it exists in the protein data bank, or if a similar protein exists that you can use for modeling uh, your protein of interest. You can also search using text words, so you can type into the top page. You can type the PDB ID. If you have the paper, that's generally the quickest way of pulling the structure up. If you can find the one DBT in the paper, uh, you can search on a keyword. If we're, we're going to look at the protein uh, erotidine monophosphate decarboxylase, so you can type erotidine in the top, or you can type the author names, and you can click on advanced searches, and you can do experimental method or Lincoln's or resolution or that sort of thing. Now, if you type in erotidine and hit return, you're going to find probably hundreds uh, of structures that are listed there. And so you'll see a brief summary of each of the structures. Up here in the upper left-hand corner, you'll find the PDB ID. You'll find the title of the structure. You'll find information uh, about the method. These are mainly x-ray diffraction structures. You'll find um, some basic information about the authors and the resolution, et cetera. Now you can click on either the title or uh, the 3L0K, and it will pull up the summary for that page. Now, I don't want you scrolling down through, but if you can go ahead, if you want to follow on your web browser in Firefox uh, for the new uh, 
tuned in just came in, you want to go to uh, www.rcsb.org in Firefox. Okay, you're the new student. All right, sorry. Uh, go to rcsb.org and uh, up at the top, type in 1DBT. And so all of you, if you want to look at the summary page for 1DBT, uh, you can pull that up uh, in the protein database. Now the first thing you're going to notice in this record is that the title is up at the top, the title of the structure. So this is rhododine 5 prime monophosphate decarboxylase. You can see the organism, and then you can see that it has a ligand UMP, which is a product, uh, it's the product of, it's an enzyme, and that's the product of the enzymatic reaction. If there is a publication associated with it, you can find the abstract and the journal article. Now, if you scroll on down, you're going to see a description about the polymer. That each protein chain is also referred to as a polymer. And so we have a protein polymer chain. The particular chains we have is a rhododine 5 prime monophosphate decarboxylase. Now, in this particular structure, we don't have other proteins there. We have just the single protein that's in the structure as far as polymer chains being DNA, RNA, or protein. So we have just the single protein chain, but we do have some small ligands. In this case, uridine 5 prime monophosphate, which you can see down lower. You also see information, x-ray diffraction. And so this is telling us the technique. Now, some of this information is not uh, going to mean much to you, in a, and you don't need to know it in order to be able to compare structures or evaluate whether I want to use structure A or structure B. Part of what you want to look at when you're picking the structure to look at is what is it complexed with? What species is it from? A rhododine decarboxylase, there are structures from uh, yeast, there are structures from bacteria, there are structures from archaea. What's the closest structure uh, to my organism that's of interest? And they also have substrate-like inhibitors. They have transition state-like inhibitors. They have product inhibitors, different complex states. So you'll want to figure out uh, which uh, particular conformation do I want to study. Uh, and so that's all information that you can look at. Issues like the unit cell are not going to be critical for um, 